is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Say neighbor. neighbor. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. God, God is with us. Say God, God is with us. Amen. Have a seat. God is with us. <laughs> Pastor, that doesn't sound like anything profound. It sounds pretty simple. Matter of fact, we already knew, most of us already know the name, what I mean, but in this season, in these times, in the year 2017, in our culture, in our country, in our condition, it's important to know that God is with us. It's important to know that God is with us. In Isaiah, you find the original uh, prophecy of this text. I want you to go over to Isaiah, the seventh, book, seventh, uh, seventh chapter again, and I'll show you that why this sticks out of everywhere, why it doesn't even make sense that this even happened. It says that in Isaiah, the seventh chapter, in the sixth verse, it said, let us go up against Judah and trouble it. Let's, let's make a gap in the wall for ourselves and set a king over them, the son of Teller. Thus says the Lord God. You should not stand, nor shall it come to pass, for the head of Syria is Damascus. And the head of Damascus is risen. Within 65 years, Ephraim will be broken, so there not will be a people. The head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is Ephraim the son, and you shall not believe. Surely you shall not be established. Moreover, the Lord spoke again, as, as I said, ask a sign for yourself from the Lord your God. Ask it either the depth or the height above. But as God said, I will not ask, nor will I test the Lord. He says, Hear now, O house of David, David, is a small thing be a weary man, but we very free by God also. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall deceive, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. I said, Pastor, it don't even make sense. Why are we talking about Ahab and Azaz and, and Ephraim and, and, and all these people? And all, all, all of a sudden, God talks about his son coming. Let me tell you why. If Judah was facing enemies, Judah was facing trouble. Two countries were trying to take over them. And they were worried about it. They were worried the prophet Isaiah. And Isaiah said to the king, the Lord says that you don't have to worry about it because those coming against you will fail. And in the midst of the prophecy, God said to Isaiah the king, ask me anything you want, no matter how high and how deep it is, ask it for me. And the king says, I don't want to test God. And God says, why are you worrying me? Well, don't worry me. Let me tell you something. Say, trouble? It's all around us. Yeah. And we like to worry folk, but we don't want to worry God. What I mean by it is we don't want to pray to God. We want to gossip and talk to folk. We want to complain and fuss at folk. We want to try and beg folk and ask other folk. But say, I need to ask God because God is with us. Say, God is with us. And in the midst of them trying to attack Judah, he said, there are more two people coming against you, but I'm more with you than those that are against you. Say, God is more with me than those that what are against me. So the enemy may come against me. Sickness may come against me. Trouble may come against me. Distress may come against me. Hurt may come against me. But God is more with me than those that are against me. God said to him, he said, don't worry about it. He said, they're trying to come against you, but he said, they're going to fail because Judah belongs to me and he's from the divine. And God said, I'm not going to let nobody take you out. He said, now whatever you need from me, ask me. I don't care how high it is and how deep it is. Say, God, can do anything you want? What fail? There's nothing too big you can't handle and nothing too small you won't consider. Say, no matter how high and how deep, say, ask God anything because he is, he is with us. Amen. You know what the king said? He said, I don't want to ask God. He said, I don't want to trouble God. And God says, why do you want to weary me? He says, you're weary me. He said, now you're weary me because he said, you're still asking me. You're worried about it. He said, but I'm going to behold a virgin shall conceive and shall bring forth a son. He shall call him Emmanuel. What is he talking about? He said, in the midst of your trouble, I'm talking to your present, but also talking to your future. Say, God, we're talking to my future. Watch it with my present. Say, God, we'll talk, we'll talk to my future. He will speak to my future while dealing with my present. While trying to deliver me, God says, it's not over yet, but I got greater things for you. And not only about you, but it's about the whole world. Say, God, you're not just concerned about me, but you're concerned about the whole, say, whole world. Say, God is. 
concerned about all of us. Amen. That's why I don't need that. That's why I don't mean God is with me. It means God, say God, is with us. Say God is with us. It's not just about me, but it's about us. Say God is concerned about us. You need a point. The first point, say God is concerned about us. How I many of you are glad God's concerned about us? Let me tell you, so the government might not be concerned sometimes. Mm -hmm. Politics might not be concerned sometimes. Uh -huh. Yeah, the banker may not be concerned sometimes. Right. Come on, your boss might not be what? Concerned sometimes. Some family members might have too many concerns. They can't be concerned. The Lord is right. concerned about us. Yeah. Yeah. He was concerned about those people. And in the midst, in the midst, of them dealing with the war, and the them dealing with their distress, he prophesied to their future and said, Judah's not going to say Judah won't be destroyed because the virgin will come out of Judah and shall bring forth a son. Say, God, they won't let me be destroyed because he got greater things and God has greater things for me. He's speaking to my future. Say, he's speaking yes, Lord. to my future. Yes. Now, watch this. That was 70 years before Jesus was born. Seven is God's number what? He said, 700 years. Before Jesus was born. But let me tell you something. Malachi ends the Old Testament at 40 years. We don't hear anything from God. Say 40 years. Yeah. We don't hear any written thing from God. Say 40 years. 400, say 400 years. Yeah. Now, let me show you something. Every time God deals with 400 years, there's a silence. But when God comes back, he comes back say, with power. Say, come yeah. with power. Let me explain something to you. Uh -huh. Abraham had, had a grandson named Jacob, and Jacob had a son named Joseph, and Joseph triumphed in Egypt for 400 years after Joseph. From, from Joseph to Moses, what? 400 years. Say 400? You said 400? Years. 400 years that he was there. They were there in Egypt. They were enslaved for 400 years. And so when Moses came out, it was on the back side of the desert for 40 years, it was on their tent for 40 years. When they messed up and complained and ran around in the desert for 40 years, it was on their tent for 40 years. Say 400 years. Between, between Malachi and Jesus being born, the born is what? Say 400. Say 400. Years. Can I bring it to the United States and our culture? Let me explain something to you. Because Christianity sometimes this complexity, complex, this complexity in African America. So we got, we got Christianity in the form of that we got it for enslaved. I'm gonna say, tell the truth and shame the devil. Say, so tell the truth and shame the devil. We got Christianity in the form of that we were enslaved. And so we saw this Jesus is supposed to save my soul, but keep me what? In bondage. That's what we did. Uh huh. Uh huh. And that's why on 18. On, 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 on a night before 1863, they had a watch night all night long trying to get what? Free. Yeah, no, when I watch that about that, huh? Yes. And so a lot of times we talk about praying to Jesus, but then we have mixed giving about, I got this, we got the Jesus in the culture that looked like that, you know, we got it in a way that some folk came and had a boundless slavery and told us about Jesus. How do I reconcile that God would set me free, but I got it from slavery? Of course, that's a good question, right? 1607, God, thank you, Jesus. 1607, the first slave landed in America. 2000, 2007, how many years? Say 400. Say 400 years. Say in the, in the, in the new millennium, say this millennium, say this millennium. Say the first shall be last. Come on. And the last, what? Shall be first. Say God is still concerned come on, about us. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So in 2008, what happened? Two thousand eight, what happened? But the first what? First African American president. See, God not sleeping. They say God not sleeping. Say God not sleeping. Say four hundred. Say four hundred years. Say God is concerned about. I know it don't look good right now. Say God is concerned about us. Now I told you about Egypt, and I told you about African Americans. But let me tell you. So let me tell you. So let me tell you about Jesus. So for 400 years between Malachi come on, and Jesus, come on, there was not a word that was written from God. And then the Holy Ghost showed up because Gabriel came to Mary and said, Mary, you're blessed, say bless, and hide, say hide, favor. She was poor. 
She was a peasant. She was a burden. She was nobody, but she was blessed. They blessed her. And highly favored. No matter what your background is, no matter where you come from, no matter what your label is, no matter what folks say, say when God speaks to you, say I'm blessed her and highly favored. Say I'm blessed. And highly, say highly. Favor. She said, why are you grieving like this? This is over to the first chapter. Why is it that God has come to visit me? He said, because the Holy Ghost is going to overtake you. You're going to be impregnated with the Son of God. Say, Immaculate Conception. Say, the Holy Ghost is coming. Say, the Holy Ghost will come in your life. Say, Holy Ghost. Yeah. I'm going to go here about that. I'm going to go, oh, I'm scared. I'm on the Holy Ghost. I'm going to get jump and shout. Say, follow the flow. No, I'm not talking about the spirit of the presence of God. I'm talking about the power. I'm say, the power. I'm say, the power of God. To overcome and take your life and breathe, say breathe, say breathe yeah. into me, say breathe into me. Yeah. A breath of life of Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again, say born again. Yeah. By the Spirit of God, say born again. Yeah. By God's Spirit, say breathe, say breathe yeah. into me, say the breath of life, but then he impregnates me with purpose, say God. Yeah. I'm going to give me purpose uh, because of the baby will say God is uh, with us. Uh, no, you're not going to have the baby Jesus. But God's going to get purpose on the inside. Say purpose uh, on the inside. And give you a reason to live. Uh, and give you a reason to shout. Uh, and give you a reason to give you glory. And give you a reason to move on and do great things. Because it's going to give you a purpose. Say purpose inside my life. Say the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Say the Holy Ghost. Yeah. It's coming. Say the Holy Ghost. Yeah. It's coming. Say God is yeah. concerned. Yeah. Now the second point. Say the Holy Ghost. Say the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Will come in your life and overtake. But she had a fiance named Joe. I'm just glad I got some men in here this morning. So the Rachel Mail, sometimes I leave me by myself, Rachel Mail. Can you have to leave me by myself, Rachel Mail? Sit down by myself. But I'm so glad I got some men in here. Men up in here this morning. Amen. If your fiance came up pregnant and you never been with him, you know what you're going to say. <laughs> huh? What you going to say? There's trouble. Say trouble somewhere. Say there's trouble. Somewhere is in trouble. Yeah. Joseph said, that's trouble. Say trouble. It's somewhere. Yeah. See, we read this now, 2,000 years later, but you got to understand that by faith, say by faith. Yeah. Joseph had to believe. He had to have more faith than Mary. You don't hear me? That's right. To believe that God was saying to him what was true. And he privately, secretly wanted to put her away. But the angel says, no, don't put her away. He said, don't yeah. put her away. But that's when she's breaking out this body. Say, bye. The Holy Spirit says sometimes God will show me your life and do something new in you and folks don't understand and folks don't know why and folks can't say how. Say with the Holy Spirit, say God the Lord is coming in my life and He's going to change me for something greater and folks don't understand how and why. But say, but I'm going to be used by God. Say God is with us. Say God is with us. She's pregnant. With the Son of God, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. This is what the prophet said 700 years ago. And 400 years, God didn't speak, but now he's speaking. Right. Behold, a virgin shall conceive, shall bring forth a son, shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. And God is with us. Now, we, in our culture, take about a half of a month, and almost a whole month, but a whole month. Because the day after Thanksgiving, what we start doing, say Black Friday. Say Black Friday. We start spending money, say spending money, buying things, running around, getting stressed out, putting something in the ground, all oh, this stuff, right? And uh, decorating because we want to celebrate, say celebrate Christmas. They made up stories about this man in a red suit and all that stuff. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And the man and a man with a deal with a red nose and, and a frosty and all that stuff, right? But to say, but the real, say the real reason mm -hmm. we're celebrating all this yeah. is because we still celebrate the fact that on that first morning, say on that first morning, mm -hmm. late in the morning, or late in, in, in the wee hours of the night, early, early, early. in the morning, yeah. with no rules and no rules. In the end, 
with nowhere to have the baby. Outdoors in a barn. Jesus, Jesus yeah. was born wrapped in swine cloth and laid, they lay, in a man. So Jesus was born. So Jesus was born. And God is. And God is. Say with us. And so, Pastor, what does it make me just today? What's why I read in Hebrews 13 name? Jesus Christ was saying, yesterday, today, and forevermore. Can I try to close? Before I still even had a prophecy about Jesus. He was already here. Say he was already. Say he was already. already. Here. How do you know he's here? Because in the beginning, God said, let us. Say, let us. Make man. Say, make man. In our image. And let us breathe into man. And man became. Say, Jesus already. Say, he was already. Say, already. We couldn't see him. Say, we was already. Say, already. Here. The Bible says, uh, oh, the first people came chapter. And the rock that followed Moses and the children was Jesus. And the rock was who? Say, Jesus. That's why when Moses struck the rock the first time, God said, don't strike the rock the second time. All you got to do is say, speak to the rock. So you got to strike the second time. Say, speak, say, speak to the rock. Why? Because all God only has to do is strike Jesus one time. And all we got to do is say, cry out to him, say, speak to him, whatever we need. But Moses disobeyed him the second time. Look at that. Say, Jesus was already, is already here. Old folk like to say that he was the captain of the Lord's host when he came to Joshua. Somebody else say it was Job's horse, Paul in the valley. He sent the storm as a wheel, say wheel. Come on, in the middle, come on. A wheel. Three Hebrew boys, the fire furnace, that definition is, and I see a fourth man walking around. It looks like the what? Say son, say son. A God say Jesus Christ, say the same, say yesterday. Say he was here a long time ago, but Jesus Christ the same say today. What do you mean, Pastor? He came in the form of a baby, but then he rose up out of that, that manger. He walked upon the earth, and the first thing he did was turn water from into wine. He said, The Spirit of the Lord's upon me. He said, Go to preach good news to the poor. Open the blind eyes. Send the heavenly people a bruise. Set the captive free. He healed the lame. He made the young man talk. You don't hear me. He opened up blind eyes. He called a dead boy to rise up in the funeral. He called a woman to come up to the big dog for 18 years. Call a dog loose. He healed a woman to issue blood. All he did was try to hear his daughter. He did all he knew. A man named in the pool for 38 years. He knew all of him made whole. You know what I mean? He called Dallas from the dead. But his saints are the same. Jesus said, God is with us. He said, when you see so you see my father. When you see me, I'm my father. We go forward. They didn't believe. They didn't believe. They didn't believe. They saw him in the natural eyes. They did not. They did not believe him. And so they put him on trial. They said, we asked you one question. Are you the Lord of God? Are you the Son of God? Are you he that say he's God? He said, I am he. He said, we have no other reason. We need no other uh, witnesses. All we're going to do is crucify this man for blasphemy. And the Bible says that uh, he could not even carry his own cross. Uh, and they hung him high. And they stretched him wide. And he got up there and said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Uh, it is finished. Uh, and he gave up the ghost and died. But said, the story's not over. He said, the same Jesus who died at our door. Uh, he rose on the third day with all power.
cross over the same. He said, to the foolishness. Oh, uh, yeah, you can be all educated, trying to see it, but when God said, when God can really talk, sometimes they sometimes not to forget about all that thing. God is! Yes. Says, with us! Yes. He's the same yesterday, yes. today, yes. and forevermore. Hallelujah. Who wants to pray this morning? Yes. Pastor, I heard the word. I heard you talking about time and season, but God can be quiet. Now, in and of our lives, we might have been for 40 years, no, 40 years, not 40 years, but 40 years will be happy in life. In 40 years, you've not been here, you won't be here. But it might be four years, it might be four months. Sometimes four weeks, you're trying to look for something for God. And you can't hear, and you can't see it, but God just being quiet and being not there. Say, God is. Say, God is with us. If you want prayer, I want you to come. If you want prayer, I want you to come. I just want, I just want to be encouraged. I just want to be delivered. I want to be healed. I need more power. I need more faith. I need more joy. I need more love. I just want to stay with me. Who's coming on the prayer? Why don't we make this my church home? I don't know what your prayer might be this morning. Who's coming on the prayer? Father, we thank you for your word. The word is true. Thank you because your power is the teaching we need of Jesus Christ. Make your word real. Lord God, thank you, Lord God. It's become real in us. Lord God, now, Lord God, let your word be sealed in us. Seal this word. That we receive this word. Lord God, somebody, Lord God, needs healing on the side of our voice. What is in this place? On our own, on our own account, Lord God, someone needs healing. Someone, Father, needs to be encouraged. Someone, Lord God, needs to be delivered, Father. Someone, Lord God, needs, Lord God, you to give answers for their more, for their more problems and solutions. More questions, Lord God, than answers. Give me the answer, Father. Be the answer. Don't just give the answer. Be the answer in the name of Jesus. Thank you for being with us, Father. Being with us in the good time. Thank you for being with us in the bad time. Thank you for being with us when things go high. Thank you for being with us when things go low. Thank you, Lord God, being with us and all oh, we do wrong and what we do right, be still with us. Because you say, come back to me. I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. Thank you, in the name of Jesus, we pray. We give you all that you give praise. For you alone are worthy. Thank you. God is with us. Let the cameras keep going. God is with us. God is with us. I'm going to sing. I'm going to try to sing a little bit of this. We're going to let you go. How many excited about Jesus? Amen? Amen. 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 It is good to see you. I know I said try to say it. Try to say it. So we're going to send you away. Joyful or last one or the other? Say joyful or last one or the other. You know, I'm going to make this picture myself. Amen? Come on, say, Houston City Church. Say Houston City Church. Where the door of the church is always open. And a place where always open. Say joyful or last one or the other? Say quite strong. Say quite strong. Love strong, Houston strong. Now I'm going to sing along with me because I need to live tonight when I'm not going to get a war and I'm uh, you know, nervous and everything. I'm going to have to sing this song with you. Give me some volume there. Not too much volume, but it's overpowered. Come on. You can jump up on your feet and, and uh, get a drum if you sound too bad. I'll shake your hand on the outside and bug you there. I just don't have to right now. Come on.
Oh, Christmas!